Education Cabinet Secretary Ezekiel Machogu has dismissed claims of exam cheating during the 2022 national examinations. The CS, who was grilled by the National Assembly Committee on the Integrity of the Exams, maintained the administration of the exams was above board. Meanwhile, the legislators are, however, recommending the establishment of a national examination regulatory authority to also superintend over the Kenya National National Examination Council. Education Cabinet Secretary Ezekiel Machogu was in Mombasa County where he appeared before the National Assembly Departmental Education Committee. The CS was on the spot as legislators queried the integrity of the 2022 national examinations. Machogu, however, dismissed claims of leakages, insisting that the process of administering the exams was watertight. Is this effective? Yeah, this. Is this reflective of the script and the records of the land? Here is a case, and if this was a dream material, it would have been. We don't have any such case. So kindly, those are perpetuating on the false books here, yeah, with all due respect. C.S. Machogu and the Principal Secretary Belio Kipsang further told the Julius Meli-led committee that the Ministry has proposed amendments to the NECT Act of 2012 to fully implement reforms in the examination administration process. Because the moment we don't trust data and statistics, then it gets, more, it gets worrying. That is because if you must be able to explain anything, including how you won an election, it's based on data and statistics. The ESCC has conducted investigations, and I think they have been. Meanwhile, in Nairobi County, the Senate Public Accounts Committee was holding sittings. The committee is mulling over the idea of having the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission conduct an independent audit into the accounts of Wajia County. Senators want those who fail to remit county statutory deductions and bank standing orders amounting to 1.5 billion shillings prosecuted. We are not going to have a bailout and give people golden parachutes to go and land in the seashells and enjoy life. We can, Wajiri will be bailed out, but those responsible must go to jail. And so that's why it's very important for that to happen. And I'm doing this because I understand the situation in Wajir. This is a highly marginalized area of this country. It has suffered historical injustices. And we cannot have a small elite from there worsen the situation. Area Governor Ahmed Abdullahi appeared before the Moses Kajuang led committee and was hard pressed to explain how money was embezzled. It is my view that we should give you up to the end of the first quarter of the next financial year to update the Senate on measures that have been taken to settle the legitimate spending bills, but with priority being the statutory deductions and what is due. Uh, what is due to, is it due to employees or due from employees? I'm giving myself 31st of July as an end date for all these exercises. And then at that point, I can have determined, uh, hopefully, what is verifiable and what is not verifiable. And then um, um, see how best to accommodate the repayment of what is very verifiable and genuine over my term. The committee issued an ultimatum to the governor to fast track the payment of pending bills amounting to 7 billion shillings, failure to which the committee will recommend legal action, including freezing of the county bank accounts. For Prime Edition, I'm Gladys Mungai.